We got a bunch of news for you today. My name is James Metz. I am the editor in chief of the Gaming Collegian. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about major loot box news coming out of the United Kingdom. Nintendo made a weird fitness game because they like doing that thing. And have you ever thought about dating the Colonel? Yeah, like from KFC. That and more on today's episode of TGC Radio. Alright guys, so joining me today is Curtis Naismith. He is one of our, he's our treasurer here at the Gaming Collegian and one of our uh, general staff here, uh, Jennifer Wynn. So let's start with Nintendo with their weird fitness game. The game's called Ring Fit Adventure and it's like an action RPG. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll probably splice in some footage of like the weird ring thing. That Fun. they're using in the like <laughs> the, the video yeah. and the leg strap, uh -huh. but uh, the best way I can like explain this game is that it's you play as a woman with fiery hair as she progresses on a journey to beat a bodybuilding dragon. Yeah, <laughs> and you beat him up with like yoga moves. It's it's weird. Yoga and like just general like fitness moves. Like you can beat him up squats. with squats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like. And like freaking, uh, what's it called? Planks. Yeah. Like you're yeah. doing planks, and you're just like, feel my abs. Or it was some like throwing thing where they like would like do that and oh, yeah. to oh, jump yeah. or whatever it was. Too. If you like hit it down, you would jump when you're running, and you would have to actually jog to run. It was strange. Yeah, it's 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 real it's real weird, and it's and it's weird because like the first like the first vi like trailer that they put out for it was like was that was like a week ago before they dropped this one um so it was like two weeks ago so they they dropped this one after like teasing this one where it's like it shows like a bunch of people old school like we type commercial playing with this ring like shooting a bow and arrow and stuff and like doing crazy stuff with it like you would expect from a nintendo commercial and then like a week later it's these two like super happy, like way too happy people <laughs> <laughs> explaining to you like, welcome to the world of We Fit Adventure. And they're like super happy and smiling. And I'm just like, get away from me. <laughs> it's like a, tw it's like what, a 12 minute video of them yeah. just excitingly explaining this game. It felt like one of those videos you see in like dystopian like movies, the, 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 <laughs> uh, the cult like brainwashing videos, like welcome to like this Welcome new to land. the island. Yeah. One of those videos. Oh man, so it's, what is it, 1989 or whatever that is, like Big Brother's watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and I think the, the, the weirdest thing about it is like, not only, like they gave, they gave a release date for it, like it's coming out mm -hmm. October 18th, so it's coming out like real soon. And it's gonna be uh, $80 at retail starting off for like the, the ring, the, the leg scrap, and the game, like all together is gonna be eighty dollars. You do they did make sure that you knew that you need a we you need a Nintendo Switch to play yeah. this game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know they have to say that for mm -hmm. like legal reasons, but it's always funny to me. Mm -hmm. Uh let's let's move on to Colonel Sanders. Oh boy. Are are y'all are y'all excited to pick up Colonel Sanders next week? I mean, it's free, so like, why not? Also, the art is really nice. Yeah, I was gonna say the art style is really nice and for free. Like, spend like 10, 15 minutes playing it. I love how you're see. saying it's nice. <laughs> I, it's noise. Um, but yeah, the yeah the the game is called "I Love You, Colonel Sanders: A Finger Licking Good Dating Simulator," which is a great name. Uh -huh. Who whoever was like in the studio making this game, just going like. What are we gonna call this thing? <laughs> <laughs> and they were just like, "I got it. Let's make it as crazy as possible." Yeah. We'll, we'll also do some splicey mm -hmm. here and show yeah. off like the trailer. Uh, yeah. The game comes out on September twenty fourth. It's gonna be on Steam for completely free. It was like, I, it's. It reminds me of when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and we would have like these random 
like video games would come in your cereal box and it'd be like like I remember playing there was a there's a Captain Crunch video game from like the late 90s it was like Crunchlings and you had to like raise your little monster it's not a good game in hindsight <laughs> but I played a ton of it as a kid and then there's also like everyone knows Chex Quest which is like yeah which is like okay. a Doom clone mm -hmm. where you play as this man called like the the Czech warrior who's mm -hmm. like Chex is a cereal so yeah. it's like I didn't get cereal as a child. So instead of <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a terrible child. Yeah. I mean, I did, but like at the same time, I didn't. It wasn't like a staple. I ate like food my parents cooked, so cereal mm. was not like a thing really. Yeah. Especially branded cereal with oh. like games and stuff inside. If I asked them, they'd be like, "Well, why not? Why would we do that? Why won't you get the family pack?" <laughs> that was that was later on in my life. Uh, when I when I was a kid, though, in like the '90s, brands were everything. Mm -hmm. Like. Like, they just threw them at you. Like, I remember when Heinz was like, we're going to be cool and wacky, and we're going to do green and purple ketchup. That was a thing. That sounds awful. It was terrible. It's, it's just ketchup with food coming. Yeah. That's all it yeah. is. But it looked bad. Yeah. Like, when you put it on your food, it did not look appetizing at all. But it was cool and wacky. <laughs> <laughs> I think they tried it again with, like, green ketchup when Shrek came out. Yeah. Oh, I don't even remember. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, it, it reminds me of those days of, like, branded, like, video games that they don't really make anymore. Like, you know, they had, like, the McDonald's kids back in the day. And, yeah. Like, they had a bunch. I remember when they would, like, make McDonald's, like, VHS movies with, like, their fully animated cartoons. I was like, they don't do that stuff anymore. No. It's, it's cool that KFC's doing that. Mm -hmm. I know it's, it's totally meant to be a meme. And mm -hmm. it's yeah, hilarious. Mm -hmm. And we will be playing it. So keep a lookout for that <laughs> gameplay. I'm knocking on wood right now, hoping that we actually get to do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm really excited for it. Yeah. yeah, I'll play it a couple of times. See what it's about. A couple of times. Was, Maybe. Mm -hmm. I, who knows? I don't think there's going to be that many routes. <laughs> is, there like, is it the opposite of like a regular dating sim where instead of you having like an option of people to date, where like you like only have only code option is Colonel code Sanders, Sanders, but you're fighting against other people who want, also want to date him? Yeah. It's like a reverse dating sim. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, are, you are in a battle royale for Colonel Sanders. You're on the well. other side of the game this time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, our main story is coming out of the United Kingdom. Um, this, is, this is a fun one, I think. Um, so a couple months ago, the United Kingdom invited a bunch of people from Electronic Arts, Activision Blizzard, and Epic Games, I want to say. And they brought them all in into, like, they brought them in front of Parliament, in front of their, uh, I think it's the, uh, Bring up, bring up this script because it's on here. The oh, it's all the way at the top, isn't it? Digital culture, digital culture, media, and sports committee. It's a mouthful, <laughs> um, but yeah, they they were brought in front of this committee, and were asked to explain themselves in regards to loot boxes. And for those of you who don't know what a loot box is, it's when you play a video game. It's a box that has a random item in it, and you pay real-world money for it. They don't disclose, like, unless you're in China, and I don't think, and here, everywhere else, it's not going to happen until, like, 2020. They don't disclose odds for what's in the box. They, you're not guaranteed to get anything good. People spend tens of thousands of dollars on this stuff, so much so that, like, I want to say that FIFA Ultimate Team in 2018 made $800 million just through Ultimate Team. Wow. That's not including unit sales. That's not including advertising or anything. So it's, it's pretty crazy, right? So these companies, like a third of their revenue comes from microtransactions through loot box systems. So when they were brought for, before the UK Parliament, of course they lied through their freaking teeth. Well, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're like... Yeah, we think they're actually quite ethical and fun. They're, and we don't call them loot boxes, we call them surprise mechanics. And mm -hmm. 
it's it's a huge like joke on the internet now. And they were comparing them to like Hatchimals and Kinder Eggs and things like that, which is like, first of all, there's like only for like a Kinder Egg, there's like only like X number of like things you can get. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's one. And two, they're physical. Mm-hmm. So like you're you're physically collecting something yeah. that will always be with you. While these are yearly installments. So you don't keep your cards when you move on to FIFA 20 from mm-hmm. FIFA 19. Mm-hmm. Doesn't happen. So the so this report that came out from the UK Parliament, they weren't looking just at loot boxes. Like there's like a funny excerpt about RuneScape that I thought oh, was yeah. really funny. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I played that in middle school. That's great. <laughs> I didn't even know you could spend money on RuneScape, but apparently you can. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there, there was like, there, there, like the main thing that people were picking out from it is their their talks about loot boxes and how they should be banned for children, and they are definitely gambling, and that they think the UK Gambling Commission, who came out and said, well, by the letter of our law, they're technically not gambling, but. Most everyone is like, yeah, they're, they're, they're gambling. You need to fix your laws. Um, and the UK Parliament was like, yeah. And the, the verbiage they used to describe the testimony from the representatives of these major AAA studios was willfully obtuse. I love how British that is. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, willfully obtuse. Basically, you lied through your teeth. Mm-hmm. Um, and how are we supposed to trust you if you're lying to us, like it just makes you look shady. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's it's really interesting, and it's like part of this larger narrative on loot boxes and microtransactions as a whole. And I think we're coming to that forefront of like studios are trying to see how far they can push it before governments regulate them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the 2K My Team trailer. <laughs> like I don't. I don't know if you've seen this, but Two K Basketball they they released a My Team trailer. It's kind of like their version of Ultimate Team, mm. and it literally has a pachinko machine, a slot machine, uh, a prize wheel. It just has a bunch of these things, like actual like gambling machines yeah. in their sports game, mm-hmm. and it's just like they're they're one of the company. Two K is one of the companies that's been like, it's not gambling. And they put actual gambling machines. Yeah. Which is weird because, like, their Grand Theft Auto V had, like, this whole DLC around gambling. And when they did that, the, like, they got banned, like, they, the game, that part of the DLC got banned in a bunch of countries mm-hmm. because it had gambling in it. And it was fake gambling. You didn't mm-hmm. use real money. Yeah. It was all in game currency. And mm-hmm. people they were like, no, it's gambling. But, but put it in a sports game that's rated E for everyone, mm-hmm. and no one bats an eyelash. It's mm-hmm. weird. Yeah. I, I think it's... People, people always ask why sports games are the ones who are, like, exploited the most. And you're a big sports fan, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, you know why, right? Because I feel like in sports, gambling is, like super like integrated like yeah. mm-hmm. fantasy football that's gambling as like it's legal gambling yeah so there's a bunch of people who gamble on sports already so they're just like gambling in my sports game that seems normal and, and yeah, then you it's, it's a pretty general thing because like in sports it's regulated so you can gamble yeah. legally on sports and like some people have it as their life like that's their lifestyle it's their job Mm-hmm. All they do is gamble on football games, basketball games, baseball. So, yeah. I mean, I can understand why people see that, but there is a limit to it, to when it becomes more from, like, a video game to, like, a video game that you gamble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially when you can buy in-game currency. And then people, like, take that those digital goods and they sell them on, like, the black market. Yeah. yeah. Which is real. Like, there, <laughs> there are people who, like, they create whole websites to sell skins to guns and things of that nature from other games. Yeah. So there, there are definitely people out there being like, yo, I'll, I'll buy your LeBron James from you. you know? <laughs> yeah. So it's, 
it's it's crazy like how how like dirty and grubby this has gotten <laughs> to the part where like there's already countries who've outlawed the loot boxes like yeah. Belgium and the Netherlands have outlawed them so it's and the European Union has also said some stuff about them that there was this whole convention of a bunch of countries that came together and were like yeah we don't agree with this either but they haven't made any formal laws yet mm -hmm. which is also should be said the UK hasn't made any laws either yet. They, they haven't, this is just a report from the committee basically saying like, yeah, they're gambling. And then they have to wait for the parliament to, you know, discuss it and put, it, put up a law for a vote, mm -hmm. yeah. which the UK parliament is very different than the US government. Mm -hmm. The way they run things is weird. Like they don't even, they don't even vote in like, like, the citizens don't vote in their prime minister. Mm -hmm. Like, we vote our president in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's whoever is the majority party votes up the prime minister. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's why they have Boris Johnson as their prime minister right now <laughs> and why that whole thing with Brexit is happening. Yeah. Which I'm not going to go into super detail because I haven't been paying attention very much. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, yeah, that's... I, I hope we see some sort of, we see some sort of, like, litigation. Yeah. Um, just some of the, like, the BBC has been all over this, and they have, like, a ton of articles about, like, loot boxes. Uh, they have one that's, like, testimonials about, like, parents talking about their kids spending thousands and hundreds of dollars in, like, one sitting and not realizing that they were spending real money mm -hmm. because they're young or they are, um, like, they're mentally handicapped. So they have, like, they have, like, a, they have an illness that, like, that these companies are, like, exploiting, and it yeah. feels so grubby. And it's yeah, just yeah. like, come on. Like, Electronic Arts' CEO is, like, top five of, like, richest CEOs on the planet. Or no, that's Activision Blizzard. Okay. Yeah. EA's is only top 10. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's crazy, dude. Um, now that we're done talking about politics, let's, let's talk about <laughs> something a bit more fun. Mm -hmm. um, the Tokyo Game Show was last week. Yeah. And there, were a couple, there was a couple of cool things came out of it. Like uh, They showed some gameplay for Death Stranding with uh, Norman Reedus. And I think it's funny if you like stare at his crotch for too long, he punches you in the face. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, but like two of like the main things that came out of it, for, for me anyway, I'm a big Resident Evil fan, I'm a big Final Fantasy fan. Um, and Project Resistance looks cool, yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. At first I was just like, Psh, multiplayer Resident Evil, what <laughs> is this? But it, it looks legitimately cool. It's, it's definitely reusing some assets from, from uh, Final Fantasy, not Final Fantasy, Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 2. Mm -hmm. um, I think Mr. X shows up in the gameplay trailer. Like you can like control him as the, the mastermind, yeah. is yeah. what they're calling it. But yeah, it's like, it's a, it's a 1v4 multiplayer game where one person plays like a mastermind. Yeah and send zombies at people, at the, the players, and each player has their own like, abilities to fight back. It's, mm -hmm. it's very similar, I think, to what's Death by Daylight? Something yeah, like Dead it. by Daylight. Dead by Daylight, yeah, mm -hmm. which is another game. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's another multiplayer game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it has the same strategy, whereas one person controls some sort of like monster, and they have like licensed characters like um, Jason or Freddy Krueger, and then there's mm -hmm. four survivors that they call them and they okay. each have their own ability and you can get mm -hmm. like buffs and stuff yeah it's pretty interesting mm -hmm. yeah so this game is this game looks really interesting it also yeah. looks like it throws in some uh it's it reminds me a little bit of left for dead a little bit too yeah because especially but it's but yeah it's like the goal is to get out it's like to run away so like a really like advanced like horror escape room kind yeah. of game. Yeah. I think they actually refer to it as an escape room mm -hmm. in the trailer. Um, 
Um, but yeah, I've, I've also signed up for the closed beta, so hopefully <laughs> they're nice to me and give me, mm-hmm. let me, let me participate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other one, this one had me jumping for joy because I love Final Fantasy. I love Final Fantasy VII. It's like one of my favorite games. I'm a cloud main in Smash Bros. Like I love <laughs> Final Fantasy VII. So when they, when they announced the remake and then I saw the gameplay for it, I'm not gonna lie, I was like, I'm not buying that game. <laughs> because I, I can't stand action art. Like I can't stand the new like, combat systems they're doing with Final Fantasy. Yeah. So for, for me, it was just like, oh, it's so annoying. But then come Tokyo Game Show, 2019, <laughs> the year of our Lord. <laughs> and they announced Classic Mode, which allows you to play the old school like turn-based combat in the new game. And I was like, that's great. Now I, ha- now I can buy this game and actually play it. <laughs> yeah. But What's the difference between turn-based and like the new combat systems? So the new combat system's like an action RPG. So you're... You're controlling one character, and the other characters are being controlled by like, uh, in, by you know NPCs, mm-hmm. and you're coordinating attack. You can, I think, you can switch between them during combat as well. But yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, it's well, turn-based combat is like it's three people standing in a line. Mm-hmm. You go through order of who's attacking. Mm-hmm. And you decide how you're going to attack. Yeah, anytime I hear turn-based combat, I think of Pokemon. Yeah, mm. Pokemon. Where like you combat. take turns okay. attacking and defending and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Final Fantasy has has had like certain gimmicks to make that interesting over the years. Um, they they stopped doing that like after Final Fantasy X though. So, which which made me sad. <laughs> Final Fantasy X, I love that game so much. When I, when I was a kid and I got Final Fantasy X 2, mm-hmm. I was so mad at it, I threw it out the window. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was, I was very mad. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's, that's like the main stories I have. Mm-hmm. What, what do you guys, are, are either of you guys like big Final Fantasy game? Like Final Fantasy I've games? actually never played Final Fantasy. I've watched gameplay on it. Oh. But I've, I've never actually, never Final Fantasy. yeah, I've oh, never man. actually played Final Fantasy. It makes me so sad. <laughs> Have you played any other JRPGs? Like, uh, I don't like, think so. Like any of the Tales games? Or no, no, <laughs> no. Wow. I've spent more time, like, especially since like 2014, 2015. I've spent more time like actually watching people play games and me playing games myself. Oh. <laughs> I feel that. I've, I've been playing a lot of like grand strategy games too. So. Yeah. I'm really bad at strategy. I mean, yeah. it, a lot of people are bad at, I'm bad at grand strategy games. Mm-hmm. So, um, I play a lot of Paradox Interactive games, for mm-hmm. those of you who know Europa Universalis 4. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but yeah, so there are, so I, I think we're going to, we're going to be wrapping it up a little earlier today, um, primarily because we only have the studio for X amount of time. Um, and this is episode one, so we're still, we're still working out the kinks. We're still learning as we go. Uh, I have been dominating this conversation. <laughs> I apologize for that. No, that's fine. Um, but... We are going to, so I'm, I'm going to end the episode by letting you guys know some of the games that are coming out this week. Uh, so coming out this week is, start with the big one, The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening uh, remake. It's being released this Friday, September the 20th. So Link is washed ashore on a mysterious island with strange and colorful inhabitants. To escape the island, Link must collect magical instruments across the land and awaken the wind fish. <laughs> Play the remake of the 1993 classic, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, when it drops on Friday. Speaking of, speaking of remasters and remakes, we, we've got another one. Uh, this is from, this is a 2013 game. 
From level five, in collaboration with Studio Ghibli, comes Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch. First released on the PS3, the game is being remastered for PC and PS4 and is making its way to the Nintendo, the Nintendo Switch. It also releases this Friday. Now this is a, this is a little bit, this is a, this is a kind of a weird game, since we're talking about weird games. <laughs> Let's talk about, uh, I, I want to say it's AI, but because the, one of the main components of this game is an AI, so AI uh, Somnium Files. This is a Spike Soonsoft game. This is, uh, so if you don't know them, they make a lot of anime games, like Conception and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, play as Abus Detective Konami Date as he chases down an elusive serial killer in a thrilling sci-fi murder mystery complete with an AI partner that resides in your eye. <laughs> like, it lives in your eye. Um, AI Sonemium Files releases tomorrow on PC, Switch, and PS4. And one of my, one of my favorite franchises growing up, I had a PS2. Loved playing the Devil May Cry franchise. So the hack and slash classic Devil May Cry 2 is actually coming to the Nintendo Switch this Thursday, September 19th. If you've not played this awesome game, like it's really good. Um, from the days of the PS2, be sure to pick up and play anytime, anywhere. Um, with that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, we'll be back. I'm not sure if we'll be back next week or two weeks from now. It depends. We're still trying to figure out the schedule. The schedules and um, people. But just keep track of us on Twitter. We're on Twitter, at Gaming Collision. Uh, give us a follow. Um, if, you've, if you like the show, uh, you know what to do. If you didn't like the show... <laughs> give us some feedback so we can adjust for future episodes, I guess. Tell me to shut my <laughs> mouth if I'm talking too much. <laughs> um, but yeah, be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.